biggest asteroid in the solar system could vaporize all life on Earth at hypersonic speeds. This is what a recent Discovery Channel documentary explains. This is by Naomi Adedokun of uh, Express UK. The terrifying video of Discovery Channel released showing what things would look like if the biggest asteroid in the solar system collided with our Earth. The impact. What would happen? The Discovery Channel released a CGI simulation of what would happen to Earth if the largest asteroid collided with our planet. It's a horrifying video showing the mass devastation minute by minute as the asteroid with a diameter of 500 kilometers hits the Pacific Ocean at the moment of impact. 10 kilometers of the Earth's crust would peel off the surface. Now from what the astronomers and astrogeologists have told us, paleoastrogeologists have told us this has taken place in the past where celestial bodies have slammed into Earth causing pieces of the Earth's surface to be flung kilometers and miles high into the atmosphere only to be rained back onto Earth as bodies of uh, asteroids or uh, meteors. Actually, they were parts of the Earth. Now, the commentary continues that shockwaves travel at hypersonic speeds. It says debris is blasted across into low Earth orbit, returning to destroy the surface of the Earth. As you can imagine, the firestorm encircles the whole Earth while vaporizing all life in its way. Even the atmosphere would boil. According, Of course, all water would be vaporized. According to the U.S. Space Agency, NASA, asteroids as big as cars are already entering Earth's atmosphere every year and turning into spectacular fireballs. Especially in August, asteroid collisions can cause serious damage that even modern technology cannot save us from. Such encounters can easily turn our peaceful life into a disaster movie. There's already evidence of what can happen when a stray asteroid crashed into the planet. We saw that happen about 66 million years ago at the Yucatan Peninsula, which caused the destruction of the dinosaurs and most, all life, most of all life on Earth because of that impact. The asteroid raised such a huge cloud of dust that it completely changed the climate of the whole planet. According to scientists, this celestial body was to blame for the extinction of dinosaurs about 65 million years ago. Scientists have now begun to take the likelihood of asteroids hitting Earth again more seriously because of the Yarkovsky effect. PhD meteorite specialist Helena Bates explains the Yarkovsky effect is basically when the sun heats up one side of the rotating body, so the asteroid is rotating as it orbits the sun. And as one side heats up, it kind of absorbs heat, and then as it rotates, that side will begin to face away from the sun and will radiate that heat outwards. And she goes on explaining that basically acts like a small thruster, and it pushes the asteroid into a slightly different orbit. And because the amount of heat that the asteroid absorbs is to do with things like composition, what the asteroid is made of, which we don't know, that means it's really, really hard to predict the surface of the sun. I think here she means to say the, to predict the surface of the asteroid and how it will act because of the sun's radiation. Now these asteroids can sometimes be in the solar system absorbing sun for billions of years. Scientists have discovered that this sometimes makes big differences in their trajectories, of course. And that's what we saw with the recent July 25th small, smallish asteroid which was supposed to buy, pass us by way beyond our moon distance into the black void of space. But instead of that, it came careening into the Caribbean Sea. To everyone's shocking alarm. How did that happen? Well, all the, astronaut, the um, astronomers came in explaining that it had to do with the Yarkovsky effect. So what would happen if such a thing took place on a, uh, a bigger asteroid? Okay, the Yarkovsky effect 
is a force, according to Wikipedia, acting on a rotating body in space caused by the anisotropic emission. Anisotropic means the property of being directionally dependent, which implies different properties in different directions. And uh, as opposed to isotropy, it can be defined as a difference when measuring along different axes in the materials, physical or mechanical properties. Uh, the uh, anisotropic emission of therm thermal photons, which carry the momentum, is usually considered in relation to meteoroids or small asteroids anywhere by from 10 centimeters to 10 kilometers in diameter. Well, 10 kilometers is, is pretty big. I mean, that's six miles in diameter. That, that's, okay, five kilometers is three miles, so 10 kilometers is six miles. That's not small, is it small? As its influence is most significant for these bodies. The history of the discovery, discovered by the Polish civil engineer Ivan Osipovich Yarkovsky, he died in 1902. He worked on scientific problems in his spare time, writing a pamphlet around the year 1900. Yarkovsky noted that the daily heating of a rotating object in space would cause it to experience a force that, while tiny, could lead to large long-term effects in the orbits of small bodies, especially meteoroids and small asteroids. Yarkovsky's insight would have been forgotten had it not been for the Estonian astronomer Ornst Opik, who passed away just recently in 1985, who read Yarkovsky's pamphlet sometime around 1909, and decades later Opik recalled the pamphlet from memory discussing the possible importance of the Yarkovsky effect on movements of meteoroids and asteroids and celestial bodies, all of these things coming at us, all, all of them around uh, in the solar system. Now, the Yarkovsky effect is a consequence of the fact that change in temperature of the object warmed by radiation of the sun chain, be, uh, lags behind changes in the incoming radiation, and the surface of the object takes time to become warm. That when first illuminated, it takes time to cool down. When illumination stops, in general, there are two components, the diurnal effect, rotating body illuminated by the sun, for example, asteroids or the earth even. The surface is warmed by solar radiation during the day and it cools at night. And due to the thermal properties of the surface, there's a big lag between the absorption of radiation of the sun and the emission of that same radiation as heat. So the warmest point on a rotating body occurs around 2 p.m., Sight on the surface or slightly after noon. This results in a difference between the directions of absorption and re emission of radiation, which yields a net force along the direction of motion of the orbit. I wonder if this has anything concerning the orbiting of our Earth, the Sun heating up the surface, causing the diurnal effect on the body of our Earth. And there's also a seasonal effect. This is easiest to understand for the idea, uh, idealized case of non-rotating bodies orbiting the sun, for which each year consists of exactly one day. Now, in general, the effect is size-dependent and will affect the semi-major axis of smaller asteroids while leaving large asteroids practically unaffected. For kilometer-sized asteroids, the Yarovsky effect is minuscule over short periods. But over long periods, of course, it's uh, not minuscule. Now, the first force on asteroid Golevka 6489 has been estimated to be about 0.25 newtons. Golevka is an Apollo Mars crosser and a Linda asteroid discovered in 1991 by Eleanor Helen. Okay, measurement. Okay, they have ways of measuring this. All right, so this is what basically took place. Uh, in the July 25th asteroid that came careening into Earth when it wasn't supposed to. Now, despite difficulties, utilizing the Yarovsky, uh, Yarovsky effect is one scenario under investigation to alter the course of potentially Earth-impacting near-Earth asteroids. Possible asteroid-deflecting strategies including painting the surface, painting, quote-unquote, the surface of an asteroid, or focusing solar radiation onto the asteroid, in order to have it alter the intensity of the Yarkovsky effects and so alter the orbit of the asteroid away from a collision with Earth. The Osiris-Rex mission, launched in September 2016, will study the Yarkovsky effect on asteroid 
Bennu. And it's supposed to be reaching there, I think, next year. Okay, bringing also back samples. Um, it was discovered on 11... <laughs> Don't laugh. It was discovered, says here, September 11th, 1999. It's September 11th, yes. It's a potentially hazardous object that is listed on the Sentry Risk Table with the second highest cumulative rating on the Palermo uh, listing. Asteroid Bennu, which is some people, some call it a mini planet. Okay. So, yeah, that's what they're going to be doing with the Osiris Rex mission. On the asteroid Bennu, somehow painting it so that it absorbs more radiation from the sun, and the sun therefore causing it to uh, change trajectory. Now, where is it going to change the trajectory? Towards Earth or away from Earth? That's a big question. So I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.